Hello and welcome to worship from Trinity United Church in Winnipeg for Sunday, April the 16th, 2023. This is our online worship and we're grateful you have found your way here to worship with us today. Whether you're connecting by the telephone or by your cell phone, on your tablet or your computer, however it is that you connect on your way to work, on your way to school, maybe as you're sitting at home late at night or early in the morning or in the middle of the afternoon. However you do, we are grateful you have come to be with us today. Trinity United Church acknowledges the Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Cree, Inui, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the Red River Métis as the traditional custodians of this land. Our drinking water comes from Shoal Lake 40, First Nation. These are the lands that we live and worship, learn and work on. In all we do, we pay our respects to elders, past, present, and emerging, as we work towards reconciliation and peace. Just a couple of things to talk about. Um, we are now in the season of Easter and all of our programs are up and running. We know that people are starting to get busy as they go outside. If there are things that uh, you see that you'd like to take part in, please be in touch and we'll make sure that everyone can connect in the best way possible. So as we begin our worship, we light our candle. Taking the flame from the Christ candle, to light our affirming candle. And this reminds us that we are on the pathway towards including everyone in our worship, ensuring that this is a safe and loving place, that we are all cared for, created by God, loved by God, and welcome in this place. Our call to worship today is Voices United 187, The Spring Has Come, and this is played and sung by Tierney Betts. for the journey, the living word passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. I'm reading from the Good News Bible, John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I sent you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive other people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus and Thomas one of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hand, and put my fingers on those scars, 
and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me. The purpose of this book. In the disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles that were not written down in this book. But these have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through your faith in him, you may have life. May God bless to our understanding this reading from the Holy Scripture. So this is a very human interaction in this story. We have all the emotions of a group of people that have just gone through a tremendously harrowing experience together. And now they are gathered in a locked room full of fear, anxiety, anger, doubt, all those negative feelings that are not what we expect when we think of the Easter season. This is days after Jesus has died, days after they found the empty tomb, days after Mary told them an unbelievable story, days after their world had been rocked and they were knocked off their feet. All this, plus they were still in the depths of their grief. No matter that the tomb was empty or the stories told about Jesus being alive, still they are deeply grieving their friend, their mentor, their teacher, their leader. Do you remember what it's like in the hours and days after you've been told that a loved one has died? What it feels like no matter what people have said or done for you, no matter how they've tried to help you, do you remember that feeling? It's kind of a deep fog or deep sadness and tears or no tears the brain that just doesn't seem to work, the body that seems to want to curl up in a, in a corner, going through the motions of what have, has to be done, the spirit that flits around finding nowhere to rest, and all the emotions, or no emotions, just none. That's where these disciples were at this moment in their story. So let's all take a deep breath for a moment and bring ourselves back to today, right here, right now, in this story. That would have been good advice for the disciples. Take a deep breath, friends. Take a deep breath. It should come as no wonder to any of us of their reaction to Jesus appearing in their midst. Even the maligned Thomas could be forgiven for not believing. Maybe he spoke the words that many of them thought, no, 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 it can't be you. You're dead. And here was Jesus, speaking words of peace, kind of, kind of like telling them to take a deep breath. Fear and peace in the same breath to settle their hearts and their spirits and their minds that are still caught in the grip of doubt and unbelief. First, at the unexpected death of Jesus, and then, afterwards, at the still unbelievable story told to them by Mary. These events were more than sufficient to take away any sense of security or peace that they might feel as disciples, 
and replace it with fear. When we are caught in the grip of fear, we too need to experience the peace that is offered here. As those disciples cowered in hiding, needing desperately, desperately to experience a sense of peace to overcome their fear. We know when fear takes hold of us, we can do little or nothing to overcome it ourselves. The disciples are caught up in the events that are out of their control. Everything is happening all around them. And even though they know that these events might have a great impact on their lives and well-being, they are still afraid. This piece, this take a breath moment, is exactly what they need to place their feet on the ground and continue to their work and ministry. So I wonder, where do we search for that peace, that take a breath moment that will allow us to continue on when our lives are turned upside down? When everything is in turmoil and the news that we hear seems to shake our very foundation, where do we look for peace? This story reminds us of the ever-present peace offered by Jesus to the disciples and offered to us too as followers. So breathe. Take a deep breath. And remember that God's Spirit is there. It's good to remember that now if our lives are upside down or even if things are going well, it's good to know for when our lives are in a turmoil. Peace. That peace that comes from God. That peace that Jesus promised. Breathe. Spirit. All there as we face whatever life gives us. It's a good way to begin the Easter season. Amen. The next hymn is We Sing Our Faith, and it's sung by Bert Johnson and the choir.
to the mission and the ministry of Trinity United Church. And our gifts of time and talent, skills and energy and money, the gifts of ourselves are gratefully received and we say thank you. Today our minute for mission is read by Leslie Kirby. This is the minute for mission for April the 16th, 2023. Real time relief really makes a world of difference. Vivin Huang's work. First, there was the pandemic. Then, Russia invaded Ukraine, causing a global energy crisis and worldwide food shortages. These, in turn, worsened an already precarious food security situation for many communities. According to the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, or OCHA, the largest global food crisis in modern history is unfolding. At a time when it feels like there's a new crisis confronting us each and every day, it's reassuring to know that our mission and service partners provide real-time relief around the world on a daily basis. Program Coordinator for Sustainable Development and Humanitarian Response at the United Church of Canada, Vivian Huang reminds us, there is no us and them, we are one community. The United Church is an integral part of a multinational network of partners and ecumenical relationships in over 120 countries. That means whenever there's an emergency, mission and service is there to help. In 2020, a major explosion ripped through Beirut, Lebanon, killing 200 people and injuring 7,000 more. Thanks to generous gifts to mission and service, we were able to help support partners to respond quickly, providing critically important tools that helped to free people who were trapped under the rubble. And as the city recovers, mission and service partners continue to assist in rebuilding schools, homes, and other infrastructure. Although mission and service has recently focused on COVID-19 relief, there's another looming catastrophe that requires our immediate attention. Without a doubt, climate change worries me the most, Huang says. We're seeing increases in droughts, floods, and severe storms that have destroyed crops and agricultural land. The more we support mission and service, the better we can respond to climate calamities. People who contribute the least to greenhouse gases are often the most impacted by climate change, Wang explains. Your gifts have made, and will continue to make, huge differences around the world. Wherever an emergency strikes, thanks to you, Mission and Service is there to help. Our prayers of the people are created and read by Elaine Hansen. Holy One, we worship you, our divine source of eternal love, eternal life. We come today continuing to feel our pure joy of Easter, Jesus, the risen Christ, with us. As we draw near, knowing we are offered eternal life with you, we know too it is because of the great sacrifice of your Son, our Savior, your grace our gift received with abiding love. So it is with most thankful hearts, minds, and souls we pray, opening our hearts to witness you in the sunrise, fresh every morning, feeling joy with your gift of a new day, never taking it for granted, opening our minds to think about how blessed we are to have freedom to choose to receive your peace, opening our souls to be immersed in the power of your amazing spirit and your steadfast promise to be with us now and forever. As we hear in scripture today, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, he knew their deepest needs and his first words to them 
were a blessing of peace to calm their fears, to clear their minds. In breathing the Holy Spirit on them in this time before Pentecost, he prepared them so they could begin to spread the gospel into the world. Loving Jesus, with us today, you know of our deep, immense needs too, being available to calm our anxious thoughts, offering that same gift of peace. Let us feel the calm. We pray for all experiencing anxiety in our community and beyond while facing seemingly overwhelming challenges and catastrophes and times of tragedy. We recognize that joy is the presence of you with us, Lord. Even in suffering and struggling circumstances, you are with us. We ask you to guide us to seek and find you and ground our expectations in faith, aiming for hope and courage and strengthened by that very faith, we pray for all in need, remembering now in silence those close in our hearts. Giver of perfect peace, we are soothed into comfort, fully surrendering to you with trusting faith, hope, and love. Help us to live as hopeful Easter people as we walk humbly with you with an open, caring heart, ready to act kindly, an open, watchful mind, ready to act justly, an open, praising soul, ready to acclaim with joy, all glory to you, God. And with gratitude and praise, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Voices United 158, Christ is Alive, played and sung by Bert Johnson. Christ is alive, let Christians sing the cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring, love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine, but say
to take a deep breath, to know God's peace, to know God's spirit with us on our journey. And now may the grace of God and the love of Jesus and the power of that spirit be with each and every one of us now and always. Amen.